Okay, so so far I haven't covered a very important aspect of magic, a very ancient part of magic stemming from animism, totemism and such. So let us not forget about our beautiful friends and quoting again and again gods do not contradict nature. If human has souls have souls, then animals do have souls. And I may testify myself for experiences with exchanges with the animal souls and experiencing them from human perspective in as much as animals could temporarily acquire my perspective as a human to receive impressions and return to their animal bodies in such a way. As an example with the second sight, I may give a fox that was straying in the winter time and first I've seen an etheric double of a fox looking through the garbage bin and then all of a sudden the fox arrived as if his double would find something interesting in the garbage bin. So the fox physically started searching through the garbage bin to find some food. Now, this chapter will be called Totemistic Emanations or Animal Metempsychosis. An animal can be a totem for a man, just as a man or a woman can be a totem for an animal, Saturnin. I saw a fox stray into the city in winter near the Polish National Library in Warsaw. I tried to track him down on the footpaths, but he escaped into the park. Sometime later I sensed an incarnation of a certain ensouled fox nature and character, masculine, cheerful, smart, curious about everything and very lively. I identified it as the very same animal I had seen near the library and it was able to communicate with me temporarily as a soul hybrid in synchrony with my mind. After it returned to its fox body, it probably maintained the impression of being a human, mixing with my nature in as much as I retained the impression of being a fox. This is quite curious, because in medieval heraldry and emblematics, a fox meant a heretic, a very cunning and wise monk. So the old shamanic tales of talking to animals are not just a mythical fairy tale. Perhaps these highly skilled shamans in times were also able to subtly capture impressions of animal conversations and later interpret them correctly, incarnating parts of consciousness or astral double souls and tool pass into animals either in trance or in normal perception mode, for example as in Felgia and the Felgir in Scandinavian traditions. Just as my body and mind is often used by various entities and being, I am a medium as a wearable suit to radiate and manifest a particular set of psychic qualities when my psyche is used as the basis for further personality, character, cognitive ability, behavioral changes to express the entity according to its character, all under my will. I treat this, I treat myself as a host in other ways as long as my body, mind, heart and remnants of my soul are not abused. Everyone is welcome. If they are violated and the integrity of my will, concentration, body, mind and soul are abused, I have my own techniques in exorcism and banishing such things, as well as my protectors and guardians that are blocking such violations for most of the time. Rounding up, a human language is not necessary to communicate, and salt impressions are intelligible throughout many species. And this is a nice little picture of a fox shaman generated in, by artificial intelligence in mid-journey. I really like it. So I have a taint of uh, Native American law with the feathers. Each biological behavioral trait of an animal closely associated with species or a more collective hive, such as ants or bees, exhibits more or less a common behavior with different characteristics and deviations from the general common type. We can speculate that the innate triggering mechanism or innate releasing mechanism draws from this pool of collective mechanisms and is closely linked to the genetic and neural expression of a developing organism. Each fragment of this collective pool of traits can thus be isolated as a species psychomorph. A psychomorph, in short, is an energy cluster composed of and afflicted with domain and species-specific information. It can borrow its character from a fragment or aggregate of the array of traits and then form a field that has these relationships. In anthropocentric terms, it filters itself through them and acquires human-specific behaviors, affects, feelings, and cognitions, energies. 
Psychomorphs do not have their own intelligence, but some can acquire it by connecting to the intelligence of an entity, an animal or a human. These true entities are not psychomorphs, they act independently and according to their nature, but they work with the human mind in a manner similar to a psychomorph. However, they exhibit tendencies associated with their nature and essential character, inclination, and in some cases intelligence, so manifested or mediated by human or other intelligence. It is easier to incarnate animals closer to our neurogenetic structure, for example mammals, than marine animals, and it comes with risks. When the cluster soul is stranded or frightened away in a possessed or mediumized mind, it takes possession of the human mind. Now, experiments were conducted with collective hive mind structures both of bees, ants, mantis species and the shadow manifestation of spider. I also experimented in uh, scrying in cooperation with the other side of Eternals. Cernatus Cornutus, a king cobra, and then Egyptian Scorpio into my spine. Now, during a malicious operation from the other side, someone tried to cry uh, the nervous system of a centipede into my nervous system, and I ended up twitching and uh, in the highly diseased spasms of pain. That was unpleasant. The collective hive mind psychomorph is represented, for example, by the hive queen if we get in touch with such an avant-garde, and appears in manifestation as a large bee, which is an extract of the collective characteristics of a particular species genius, and appears to the human mind in this form, as a large front of this part of insect. In other words, the human mind interprets the primacy of the collective in this form. Please do not confuse this with... Uh, hybrids of insectoid, human, animal, uh, ctonic diamonds, for example, because they are completely different things. The collective functions in such a way that one member can be killed and the rest retains the structure, but when large parts of the hive are destroyed or altered, as happens in the modern world, as ecosystems are gradually destroyed, the entire hive consciousness suffers and becomes destabilized, resulting in strange behaviors and becomes regressive and slowly decimated. The extinction of species is not only the physical death of an animal, but also a mass murder of its entire species-specific consciousness. And its death causes a tremendous imbalance in the rest of the collective clans and species of the animal kingdom, which are highly affected not only by the ecosystem, but by the entire fabric of the subtle structures of the life waves. Any animal with a photic nervous system, photosensitive cells, has the capacity to develop a life envelope or a soul with a tonic soul on insects that are black or something more developed uh, through the optical occult nerves. Uh, soul and then astral double. And if the spine, jet, if they are spined creatures, is able to filter ophitic currents, they can transform their souls and astral doubles into wings, flying cats, flying vipers, winged lions, I winged two lions in the zoo of war, so I was a bit uh, worried that they are imprisoned and they lack their freedoms. Their name is Sophia and uh, Zulus. So, as in Temple of the Wing, the lions of Al-Uzat in ancient Nabatea, I have my own lion friends that are unwinged. How did I perform it? I remotely activated the base of the spine, uh, then dragged a vortex of the Kundalini through the whole nervous system of an animal and uh, just unwinged it in such a way. So, Pegasi are uh, horses that undergo such operations. And yes, when I was working as a stable boy, I also managed to unwing the whole stable by touching the horse on the forehead and then focusing on the back of its spine and creating a vortex that created an astral double of a Pegasi. <coughs> One was just flying by. Hmm, that was a glass. Of course, talking to an animal requires viewing it from the perspective of its cognitive phenotype and language is based on communication without words from the perspective of the animal totem. So, we receive impressions and give away impressions, and in such a way humans and animals may learn from each other, often unconsciously, and often to a detrimental or a better effect. Please use your mind wisely, and when you're in touch with animals, treat them kindly. Thank you.